compute the following integral. So we have a region A. It's going to be bounded by the x, y axis, and the circles radius 1, radius 3, centered at the origin. So integral is going to be over this region A, y over square root of x squared plus y squared dA. So our region is suited to polar coordinates, so we're going to do our integration that way. So what do I need? First, I want to change our function from x and y over to r and theta. The way we do that switch is going to be x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. We substitute, y becomes r sine theta. In the bottom, we have r squared times cosine squared plus sine squared. That goes to a 1, so I'm looking at square root of r squared, which is r. So the r's cancel, and I'm left with f is just going to be sine of theta. Next, let's get the limits. So I look at my region A. What do we have? I want to describe this in terms of r and theta. So r is going to go from 1 to 3. Then theta is going to go from positive x-axis, that's theta equals 0, to the positive y-axis, that's theta equal to pi halves. Only thing left, element of integration. So this is dx dy in terms of polar. So that's going to be r dr d theta. We can memorize that, or you can memorize the picture. So if I draw in a little polar rectangle, okay, we'll put in the full wedge. Okay, suppose we have this side's dr, so that's a little change in r. Then we'll have d theta, a little change in theta. So I want to get the area of this rectangle. Okay, it's not a rectangle, but for purposes of the element of integration, we're going to treat it like one. Okay, I'll call the length of the side of the wedge r. So this side is going to be dr. This side here, that's an arc along a circle. So that length is just going to be the radius times the angle. So that's r d theta. So you know, take base times height, we get r dr d theta. OK, put everything in, and now I can calculate. So I'll do r first. So sine theta just sits there, waiting for us to get to it. So we're going to integrate r dr. So it's 1 half r squared. Put our limits in. OK, and then we take the difference. We're going to 9 minus 1 over 2. Gives me a 4. Bring that out in front. Now we're doing the sine theta. OK, derivative of minus cosine gives me sine theta. So any derivative is minus cosine. Evaluate, take the difference. So just make sure, keep track of your minus signs, and you wind up getting a 4.